Hello and welcome or welcome back to the Janome channel. My name is Serena and I am the maker here who loves to recreate vintage fashions. In today's video, I'm going to be using my Janome Skyline S9 to make a 1960s little boy's romper, also known as a John John, which I'll be referring to throughout the video. I'll be using a true vintage pattern from the 1960s and what's going to make this extra special is I'm gonna use the Skyline S9 to create my very first machine applique to make it that much more vintage looking. I'm really excited to take on this project and if you're interested in following through, go ahead and like and subscribe to this channel and let's get to. For today's video, we're going to be using Simplicity 6157 in a toddler size two from the 1960s and I'm going to be making the shorts version, so view two, and we're gonna add applique to the center similar to this one. Here is the back. It is a diagram of all of the pattern pieces and the back of the outfits and all of the fabric requirements on the side as well as suggested fabrics for this garment. Starting with cutting out the pieces, I am using a old sheet that I found from a thrift store and this pattern can be cut on the grain or against the grain, the bias, so that way you can get a cute little chevron pattern if you use stripes. I decided to go against the grain because I feel like this is such a simple look that it always gives a little bit of interest to the John John to like play with the patterns and prints and the directions that it runs in. Starting with the center front pieces, I take it over to the Janome and sew a 5 8 seam allowance down the center line and I am going to pink all of the seams on this because it gives it that nice vintage look especially since this fabric is a lighter weight cotton I'm not concerned about it fraying at all it's been a year since I've started using this machine and I think I got that pedal free sewing down I am not stumbling over the buttons like I did a year ago and I'm so proud of myself for the progress so then I take it over to the iron board and I start pressing that seam open so I can get a nice flat base for the applique later so I press this open first and then I go back with my pinking shears to cut the seam allowance down if you don't have pinking shears and you're looking for a little bit more security you can use the over edge stitch which is a, like a cover stitch that is a built-in function on your Janome Skyline S9 now that springtime and warm weather is among us I love making really quick projects for my kids especially my son who likes to run and jump and play like most little kids do so the John John is the perfect outfit to make very quickly but it's also very easily customizable and and I feel like because the Janome Skyline has so many functions, this is an opportunity for me to really get in there and learn how to use a lot of the decorative functions on this machine. Over the course of the year since working with this machine, I have tried the basic embroidery. I've also tried sewing on appliques that I've made myself. Check out my Halloween reels over on Instagram. The next step to me mastering a modern computerized machine is to try a machine applique and I've never done this before on any machine and I was really excited to try this especially over the holidays I just didn't get an opportunity and my kids are in their character phase so now is the time to learn so before moving any further on this John John it's time to put the tabs on for the side it's a little decorative tab that holds in the waist and first I interface the tabs and then I put everything right side together and do a 5 8 seam allowance on the machine once both the tabs are assembled it's time to attach them to the back pieces of the pattern so one on the right and one on the left as marked on the pattern I am still working in halves and I find because children's clothes are so small, it's always easier to do the embroidery either before you start the project or before you assemble the front and the back. So I'm starting to prep for embroidery by basting a stitch or stay stitching around the edges so that way when I put it on the hoop, it doesn't stretch out the garment. This step is really important and if you're working on an incomplete garment like I am, it could be the difference between having a wonky stretched out neckline and armholes or having a smooth professional uniform finish. 
Next, I grab some tearaway stabilizer and the front of the John John. I line up the center front with the guides on the hoop to make sure everything is nice and centered. And then I tighten it up and get it ready for the machine. After I head over to the machine and get it ready for embroidery, I remove the stitch plate, the bobbin, as well as the presser foot and replace those with the correct attachments and accessories to turn this into an embroidery machine. Now it's time to stitch and I was feeling a bit brave. I did not do a touch stitch, which I usually do every single time I embroider anything. I just decided to go for it. I felt like the design was simple enough that I could figure it out as I went. This machine is very forgiving and it allows you to skip ahead a step or jump back a step. So in the beginning when I put the first stitch down without adding any of my fabric for the design, I was able to go back a step and then put down my fabric and stitch over it. And I really appreciate that for someone who's a beginner and is learning how to navigate computerized sewing. In between each step, I take it off the machine and start cutting out the applique. This is the body of the excavator or the cabin. And so I cut that out with some scissors. It would be ideal if I had some really small embroidery scissors on hand, but I did not. So I just used the sharpest scissors that I had and got as close to the stitching as possible before putting it back on the machine to add the next part of the excavator, which is the arm. If you made it this far and you're enjoying your time here on the Janome channel, please consider subscribing to this channel so you're able to check out other amazing Janome makers. Once the arm is cut out, I take it off of the hoop and go ahead and cut that out as well. Then I put it back on the machine and it does like a thicker outline on the arm as well as all the other pieces. So it kind of, it doesn't quite do a satin stitch, which I thought, which would cover the raw edges more, but it does sew on top. So it has that very fringy vintage applique look and it, it looks really nice. I think it looks very cool and um, it gives it more of an authentic vibe, which I was really excited to see. Now that applique is on, it's time to sew up the side seams, which is what I am doing here. Again, with a 5 8 seam allowance, you're gonna do both the right and the left, as well as under the crotch. You can add a snap placket under here, but I don't find it necessary for us, so I omit that. I find with a lot of running, jumping, playing, and climbing on the playground, the snap placket tends to come out, and the only way to avoid that is to make the romper substantially longer, which we do not like. So in this case, we just sew up the crotch at, with 5 8 seam allowance like everywhere else. Moving on, it's time to attach the facing. I actually cut the facing on the fold, but it should have been two each, just like the main outfit. I just wanted to avoid having to do another seam, so I cut it on the fold, which works pretty well. I do this quite often. And now that everything's pinned together, I take it back to the machine to sew a 5 8 seam allowance all the way around. And then you're gonna take it off the machine, cut down with the pinking shears. If you do not have pinking shears, then take great care to clip around all of the curved edges on here, so that way the facing folds over flat and smoothly to the other side. Also, take the time out to understitch because this is very important that it doesn't roll forward later. The final tip for this is to make sure you interface where the button and buttonholes will be on this garment so that way the fabric doesn't tear. You can interface the entire facing, but I wanted to save interfacing so I usually just do the little tabs. To understitch, make sure that you trim your seam allowance and press it towards the facing. And then I like to open it up flat and sew as close to that seam line as possible on the side of the facing so that way it doesn't show on the front. You can do this on the wrong side of the fabric, but I feel like I get a more flat application if I do it on the right side, plus I get to see where the stitches are really going and how close I'm actually getting to the seam line. All I have left are the finishing touches, like adding the buttonholes and sewing the buttons on as well as doing all of the hems, most of which I like to do by hand. But if you're someone who likes to do everything completely by machine, you can do a blind hem on the sewing machine as well as machine buttonholes. And you can even sew the buttons on by machine using this Janome Skyline S9. There's almost nothing this super machine can't do. 
Now that I'm officially done, all is left to do is to put it on the dress form and admire the final product. And I'm so happy with how this turned out. I think the applique is super cute. I cannot wait to try out more designs and go even bigger on my next project. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video with someone you think might be interested. For more fun sewing videos and tutorials, be sure to check out the other makers on this channel. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!